Thing you in the canal, the last important one, the landmark for you to remember, are the pubic tubercle here and the inner side. The reason why? The reason why? Extended between the two are the lower border, is the lower border of the external meat of the new It forms a curve, yes? It forms a curve lower border. The external epidural system and constitutes this in the ligament. And its lateral attachment, as you can see there, is to the SIS and medially to the pubic tubercle. Okay? The general direction of the majority of the aponeurus side is R the muscles when you put your hand in your pocket. That is not forward immediately. But just above the superficial ring here. The fibers are running somewhat transversely. You see that? Some fibers are running transversely. Mm -hmm. And that's to reinforce strength. The superficial ring. The superficial ring is supposed to be a triangular shaped structure with the inferior cross here being the stronger and curved against which the spermatic cord will lie and the superior medial pillar of the cross. Alright, so it's the strength that prevents the widening separation of that. And a part of the attachment of the inguinal ligament is reflected backwards. You can just about see there. It's reflected backwards towards <coughs> the pectineal line and it's called the reflective part of the inguinal ligament. The French people call this reflective part the third cross because you have our inferior lateral cross, you have a superior medial cross, and the French describe it as the third cross. Okay? You think? The reflective part of the inguinal ligament. And this helps to strengthen the inguinal canal, it's possible to all media. So, you can all find the superficial inguinal ring easily. Just be for the pubic cubicle and insert your finger superior laterally and you can into the superficial ring. He doesn't say it's not so well developed in the female as in the guy, but I'm not going to do that. Where is the deep inguinal ring? He can really say it's midpoint between the A side and the symptoms is stupid. That is what we said when we the textbook. And that's often referred to as the main winner point. Mm -hmm. But when you come up here, we search and say it's mid inguinal, midpoint of the inguinal ligament. That's midway between the pubic tubercle and the A side. Midway. Okay? But it is fact you measure that as any individual, they are almost Less than a centimeter apart, there's no big defect, there's no big issue. And right behind there, you will feel the femoral archway, or rather the beginning external in the femoral archway at the deep ring. The deep ring is also about a centimeter or so above the left of the inguinal ligament. And the length of the canal is roughly split. Is about four centimeters, sometimes of just five, like in Marvel. Okay. This is canal. It is. The anterior part of the this canal is rooted by the external lobe of the neurosis. And in the vicinity of where the deep ring is, in the vicinity of where the deep ring is, the anterior wall of the canal is strengthened by. The origin of the or rather the attachment is the origin of the internal complete muscle fibers in your book that says some books say half and some say third organ part of the inguinal ligament. Is that right? So these are the strength the anterior wall of the inguinal ligament that's the, the origin of the internal complete muscle fibers. So we're going on to skin. Then we get into the superficial fascia, in which the, the fatty layer there is known as 
campus fashion. And then you get to this muscular layer, right? This membrane of layer, which is now all campus fashion. And having done that, you get down onto the upper nose, and there we are. And you have the intercrural fibers there, which we said are spreading the deep at the tip of shivering. So this is on the left side. Here's the cord structure that is supposed to shivering. This diagram I should have to stop on confusion, isn't it? Okay. So here we have the femoral artery and the vein. And the cord is coming just at about the sliver. The big point of inguinal or mid inguinal point. And you can see the internal of these fibers coming from the inguinal ligament are right over there, centering towards the thing anteriorly. Going more laterally, we have the transversal abdominis muscle. And usually run in between the two, and therefore through, through the canal, yeah. but it's not a constant oh, way of the sperm and the cord itself. It's the iliac inguinal nerve, yeah? And you're all familiar, the inguinal, iliac inguinal nerve has a relationship to the iliac hypogastric nerve. Yes, same and origin. Also relationship. Same origin. Right, it's a collateral branch. Yes, the iliac inguinal nerve is a collateral branch of the iliac hypogastric nerve. So you understood the anterior layer of the canon and the roof. Now, the anterior, the anterior layer of the inguinal canon. Moving over, we have the conjoint tendon which is formed by the fusion of the arching fibers of the internal here and the transversus abdominis muscle. Okay? The floor of the canal is formed by the cutter shape, lower part of the inguinal canal. Okay? And the posterior wall of the inguinal canal predominantly is formed by the fascia. When you open the canal and retract the cord structures of the way, it's the chromastic fascia which is forming predominantly the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. So all hernia, but the direct or indirect, must come in relation to the posterior wall, okay? must come through that. Now with that medially, medially, we showed you where there was the reflective part of the inguinal ligament, the third cross, that helps to reinforce the medial posterior aspect of the inguinal canal. Yes? But those chondroid tendons which I showed you, they are arching over to become inserted into the pubic crest and they have to reinforce the posterior wall of the inguinal canal medially as well. The fascia transosphere, which is this fellow here. So this is this open and they already open. You get into the space of cobra, which is then continue to the retropubic space and the keep up red tips. Okay? There we have the keep up red tips. And what this is really showing you is the relationship of the spermatic core, which is instead of here, to these vessels there. The spermatic core enters the deep root immediately lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels. The inferior epigastric artery is coming right now from the the determination of the external element for the femoral artery there. So an indirect hernia will come through the deep inguinal ring and it's lateral to the inferior epigastric mm -hmm. where a direct hernia will come immediately to the inferior epigastric vessels. So we saw where the superficial ring was reinforced by the intercrural fibers. Mm -hmm. 
the third cross and the the contrast tendon. In some individuals, the rectus abdominis muscle, its attachment to the pubis will extend somewhat more, more laterally. Yeah, to the contrast tendon here. Sometimes the rectus abdominis extended of attachment may extend more laterally on the pubis, and that sometimes is considered as helping to strengthen the half of the canopy kind of area. When it happens, which word is that first called the ligament of Henley? When it happens. What happens at the deep ring? The reinforcement. That permaster muscle is said to be important because when it contracts up, it pulls all of the vessels and fat and all of the other structures up and acts as a plug to the deep ring, the so called premastery plug. Okay? So that's one feature. Now, some of the fibers from the transverse abdominis, this is the deep ring here, eh? will arch around the deep ring on its medial aspect and become attached to the inguinal ligament. In most people it is spirotic and it is called the interfobular ligament. In those instances, individuals in which it is muscular, then it is often referred to as the interfobular muscle. For the interfobular ligament. So when the transversus contracts down because of this attachment, you can see when they contract, it will want to come down and help to sort of obliterate or close off the deep inguinal ring. Okay? And the chondroid tendon with its in transversus and internal lobbing muscles, they have a mechanism whereby when they contract, the chondroid tendon, the insertion, the energy from there, when they contract, they will want to approximate in that direction towards the inguinal canal, and that is referred to as the inguinal shutter mechanism. You with me? They shut and have to shut off the deep ring, so you will not get any hernia. So these are some of the factors which reinforce the deep ring. I won't go into the camera because I'm not supposed to go there yet. Is that just the diagram showing you the interfobial? It's not that too good. I would diagram because the ether is supposed to be here and the arch is supposed to be here and the interfobial is supposed to be there. Okay, lastly. But not least is the understanding of what is a direct and what is an indirect hernia. <coughs> and not the last one. On this picture here, we have the interior epigastric vessels. Huh? So where would be the deep ring? Right, right to put the left one in there. So when the posterior wall, the fascia channel is weakened as in me <laughs> and in my life when you get older it gets weakened and the pressure is the problem is for the increase that's the only thing in my life it's the only thing it's the only thing the rest of it gets smaller including the back of the oh Jesus <laughs> so when you get the hernia coming through medial it's a direct we know hernia, yeah? Mm -hmm. When the hernia comes lateral through the deep inguinal ring, it's referred to as an indirect inguinal hernia. You have to know what it is clinically to distinguish between the two, yeah? So the patient you have in the exam, the patient is in bed. If the hernia is there, then it's there. If it's not there, the guy has to examine this groin here. The first thing is inspection. And the next thing you have to do is ask the patient to cough because that's the part of inspection. And when he coughs, the ball is coming up. Sometimes the ball goes back in when he stops the coughing. But if not, then you'll have to push, reduce the hernia, push it back into the abdominal cavity. Yeah? 
Then the next thing you have to do is find the deep inguinal ring. And you know the surface marking for that now. Bend the inguinal ligament, bend the inguinal ligament, just above the femoral artery. You plug your finger into the one finger. That's why you go that to cut all those sharp moves, you know. You plug your finger into the deep inguinal ring and ask the patient to repeat the maneuver of coughing. Yeah? If your finger is in the deep ring and you cough and it's in the buzz coming up, then you know it's a direct hernia. But if your finger is in the deep ring and the cough doesn't produce a swelling, you know it's that indirect hernia. You just remove your finger now and ask the patient to cough and it's the hernia coming and tell the boss, the examiner, hey, the guy has an indirect or a direct hernia. You know, you understand the mechanism behind that symptom? But a lot of this, some of the other public nerves are probably because you do not examine enough patients to, to, to carry out this procedure well. The sensitivity of the gastric heart is important to observe it because sometimes they say the weakness is just for the direct hernia is just by this area here. Just that you said to the uh, if you have the gastric battery. And you can see, we are ready to do a movement from there to there. There's no big thing, eh? And sometimes the patient has a dead hernia when you plug, think it will not cough. And they say, it's an indirect, you follow me? So in truth, in reality, the only time you can tell for sure is at the time of surgery, we identify the interior epigastric vessels, you know? And since then we catch it up for me. You know about Hassel's back triangle? Yeah? We all know about Hassel's back triangle. Remember. Remember. Okay, so the reflective government. Conjoint coming as well, and you can see the moment of handling on both sides coming down. Alright? Yeah, this is Hassel's back triangle. The normal version of Hassel's back triangle is that from the lateral edge of the rectus abdominis muscle, the inguinal ligament, and the inferior pediatric artery, they call it E. That's what they're supposed to show. We have a triangular area. And through this area, all direct renal hernia must come through. You with me? All which one? All direct renal hernia must come through. Mr. Hessel Baptin, when he did this thing in 1814, he included all the way down the road ligament to the bone, and that would include, include of course, the several uh, hernia. All right. But today's version of the strangler area is above the inguinal ligament. When we get into the space behind the space of focus, we can damage a number of things which are communicated to form the NTA pediatric vein. We can damage them. And since I'm not talking about some of the area, the pubic branch of the Interior epigastric artery sometimes run down towards the lacuna ligament, and if you should divide the lacuna ligament, that's diverted to reduce the femoral area, and you can nick that artery and you can get tremendous bleeding. Actually, the other lecture might just be here, so I'll leave it at that. You guys don't think No? Yes.